Let's take a look at organizational culture and performance. The concept of organizational culture has drawn attention to the long neglected subjective side of organizational life. However, many aspects of organizational culture have not received much attention. Emphasis has been placed primarily on the practical issues of culture. Culture is then treated as an instrument designed by top management to shape the behavior of employees in purposeful ways. This in many ways is understandable, but there are two major problems following from this emphasis. One is that many aspects of organizational culture, such as economic growth, technology, or rewards are simply disregarded. The values and ideas to which organizational culture research pays attention are primarily connected with the means and operations employed to achieve predefined and unquestioned goals. This also reduces the potential of culture to aid managerial action. Simplifications and the promise of quick fixes often lead to problems. Superficial organizational change projects, for example, involve not just failures, but often lead to frustration, low trust, and cynicism. Organizational culture calls for a break with the idea that a particular input leads to a predictable effect. With the technical interest in achieving goals comes an underdeveloped capacity to correlate associated behavior standards. Viewing culture as a means leads to evaluations of them more or less of good, that is, as useful without consideration of whether this goodness is the same as usefulness. The assumption is that culture can simply be evaluated in terms of right and wrong, good and bad. A culture has a negative impact when it points behavior in the wrong direction. The ideal culture is characterized by a clear assumption of equity, a clear sense of collective competence, and an ability to continually apply the collective competence to new situations as well as to alter it when necessary. When culture is narrowly and instrumentally understood as simply useful, those aspects of culture that are not easily or directly seen as related remain out of sight. But few issues are simply good or bad, functional or dysfunctional. Some things that may be seen as good may be less positive from another angle. Commitment may lead to rigidity. Strong leadership creates dependent followers. Cultural themes call for careful consideration where standard judgment should be applied with great caution. The consequence of the pragmatic approach is that culture tends to be limited to aspects directly related to efficiency. This means a rather selected interest in organizational culture, but much worse is a tendency to emphasize mainly the superficial aspects of these selected parts of organizational culture. The problem is that norms are not the best vehicle for understanding culture. Whereas norms tell people how to behave, culture is a much broader and more complex influence on thinking, feeling, and sense-making. Behind common norms and behavior, there are a shared set of understandings and meanings guiding thinking. At the same time, any culture may be seen as vital for competitive advantage. An organization's competence and ability to manage people to considerable degree overlapping organizational culture are not easy to imitate. Even to describe and analyze culture is difficult. Adapting culture to technical concerns also leads to the confusion of organizational culture with management ideology. Frequently, what's referred to as organizational culture really stands for the ideals and visions prescribed by top management. Sometimes the best way to investigate corporate culture is through interviews with top managers. Organizational culture and managerial ideology are in most cases not the same, partly due to the lack of depth of ideology compared to culture, partly due to variation within organizations between top management and other groups. However, there are cases where management ideology powerfully influences cultural patterns. Management ideology is but one of several expressions of organizational culture. Managerialization of organizational culture may seem appealing, but less conscious aspects of culture patterns than those that managers are already aware of and promote are more valuable to focus on. Ideals and values in an organization are significant as a basis for informed management thinking and action. Most weaknesses of organizational cultural thinking relate to the wish to make it appear more immediate or technical as a tool. Oversimplification and promises of quick fixes do not necessarily serve narrow practical interests, neither those of managers nor of others. 
making things look clear cut and simple may be misled. Learning to think culturally about organizational reality might inspire everyday managerial action rather than unrealistic programs for culture change. Before assuming that culture is functional or good for organizational or managerial purposes, it makes sense to recognize that the interests may conflict. Contradictory interests, those of professions, divisions, classes, consumers, environments, the state, owners, top management, and so on, may produce different views on what's good, what's important, and what's appropriate. Most aspects of culture are difficult to designate as clearly good or bad. Culture is conceived as a building block in organizational design, which includes the norms, values, and behaviors of employees. One cultural dimension is norms. It's here that culture is most easily understood. Norms guide the behavior and attitudes of employees because they have a powerful effect on the requirements for its success. A problem with this view of culture is the tendency to see it as forcefully affecting behavior. The strength of a culture influences the intensity of behavior and is determined by how widely assumptions are shared. This approach tends to view norms and values as capable of being abstracted from other things in an organization. Norms may be closely tied to a variety of circumstances in the workplace, like the reward structure or the kind of job, rather than being organization-wide. It's important to distinguish between common culture as a source of shared understanding and culture as something that directly affects behavior through norms. Culture patterns affect outcomes, but in much more indirect ways than many assume. A second approach linking organizational culture with performance emphasizes the power of management action. It's assumed that the leaders of an organization exercise more influence on the workplace and on the way in which employees perceive and understand their tasks. We can distinguish between internal, management control, and external environmental control, and between substantive outcomes and symbolic ones. While constraints beyond managerial control basically determine the substantive outcomes, management does not have far-reaching influence on employees' attitudes to social reality. The most important behavior patterns are determined by external constraints. The cultural dimension is more stabilizing in terms of its force. Shared understandings are likely to emerge to rationalize the patterns of behavior that develop. Clever symbolic action may partially replace substance in an ambiguous situation and thus increase the satisfaction felt by a group without any real substantive change. Managerial action may affect how social reality is perceived in a way that leads to shared beliefs and understandings, or at least reduced diversity in these regards. Though the extent to which this action can produce organizational standard remains an open question. When using organizational culture in relation to performance, culture can aid in making wise decisions. Culture is viewed as relatively resistant to attempts to control and change. Mapping cultural terrain produces a guide to orienting oneself and reducing mistakes, which is critical in order to avoid highly negative reactions. The focus here is not on the effects of managerial action, but rather the consequences of organizational cultures on reactions to initiatives and change efforts. Culture is a pattern of basic assumptions that has worked well enough to be considered valid and therefore to be taught to new members as the correct way to perceive, think, and feel in relation to those problems. Artifacts are the visible and audible patterns of culture existing on the surface level and values on the intermediary level concern what ought to be done. Cultural phenomenon have far-reaching effects on organizational effectiveness and individual satisfaction. One common view on the relationship between organizational culture and performance is called strong culture thesis. It's often been assumed that commitment of an organization's employees and managers to the same set of values, beliefs, and norms will have positive results. A common culture makes it easier to agree upon the goals and appreciate means for attaining them. There's also positive effects on motivation. A shared culture encourages people to feel belonging and responsibility. Some researchers suggest the reverse relationship between culture and performance, that high performance leads to the creation of a strong culture. 
it is possible that success brings about a common set of orientations, beliefs, and values. One version says that adaptive cultures are the key to good performance. Such cultures are characterized by people willing to take risk, trust each other, be proactive, work together to identify problems and opportunities, and so on. Too much change can lead to instability, low cost efficiency, risky projects, and a loss of a sense of direction. Some management writers argue that sticking to one's long-term business is a formula for success. An additional complexity is that what facilitates good performance may very much be a matter of time perspective, and this changes the context over time. It's common to sense that something that we can call corporate culture will have an impact on many types of actions and organizations, and consequently also on corporate financial results. As we've seen, however, such speculation is also problematic. It can be difficult to see how culture and the outcomes of culture can be separated. If culture is meanings and socially transmitted behavior patterns, how can it then include attitudes and behaviors and replace structural control? Organizational culture becomes both cause and effect. The workplace culture cannot be separated from the way the job is performed and therefore no causal relationship can be established. Without culture, socialization is impossible, and without socialization, there'd be no one to carry culture. Furthermore, if there were no specific work group culture, there'd be no need for socialization. People would fit in any way as a result of a shared, broader culture associated with nation, class, profession, and so on. Workplace culture is important to understanding the nature of workers' commitment to and identification with the workplace. Generally, it's often difficult to separate clearly what is culture and what are its outcomes. Most interest in culture and performance focuses on the organizational level. For most employees and leaders, organization-wide cultural patterns and aggregated results are of less concern than the meanings, values, and ideals or ideas in the work units that they work in and or are responsible for and their results. In order to understand organizational culture in relationship to performance, it's often wise to focus on cultural nature of performance issues in relationship to individuals and similar units. When considering the cultural influence on performance for individuals, one issue concerns the significance of historical results in relation to people's potential based for their capacity to give favorable impressions of themselves. Another set of concerns are the particular results for particular people, such as the track record for career relative to performance? Are people promoted based on indications of results or on seniority? The cultural analysis of how different ideas and ways of reasoning about performance is an important topic with little research to clarify the concept. Ambiguity in this area contributes to the usefulness of cultural approach to organizational performance. Organizational culture is highly relevant for understanding organizational characteristics like financial performance. Many people assume that corporate culture stands in simple causal relationship to corporate results and can easily be evaluated as good or bad and may be controlled by management. While there is general connection between culture and performance, it's not possible to say that corporate culture in general or a specific type of culture has a clear and simple effect on performance. <laughs> The inclination to go for quick fixes in management is misplaced, as organizational culture is best conceptualized as a complex pattern of meaning, ideas, and symbolism. Practical applications in organizational life are rarely about large-scale projects controlling and changing culture. They're typically better understood in more incremental everyday life and in culturally constrained work. The difficulty in establishing concrete results requires attention to how performance evaluation exists in a cultural context. 